Okay, here we go. Let's continue with the ridiculous lies. Uh, post show moment number four, and here he says, The Rapture in Matthew chapter 24. This is one of the funniest little things. You know, the rapture is nowhere near Matthew chapter 24. Okay, that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, let me show you here quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Let's see what Paul says. Behold, I show you a mystery. You know what mystery is? It's a previously unrevealed scripture. Okay? This is a mystery. There are passages in Joel in the Old Testament about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show you a little bit more here as we continue. I'm going to go here to Matthew chapter 24 a while to show you that Steve Anderson is lying yet again. But let's play a little bit of his lies here. Today I want to read for you one of the clearest passages that just explicitly spells out a post-tribulation rapture, or a rapture that comes after the tribulation. Matthew 24, beginning in verse 29. Immediate okay, now it's funny because he goes to Matthew chapter 24. Now, I'm here in Matthew 24, but i got to actually go to Hebrews chapter 9. You see, little Steve Anderson here is not a dispensational believer. Therefore, he does not understand Scripture. What Matthew chapter 24 is actually is, is it's actually the Old Testament. You say, what are you talking about? It's the New Testament. No, it's in a collection of books called the New Testament. Look here in verse Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Who's that? Jesus Christ. Look at this. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, the Old Testament in other words, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Okay, what's going on here? When did the New Testament begin? With the death of Jesus Christ. Now, Matthew chapter 24, we'll go back there, whoops. Matthew chapter 24. Is the death of Jesus Christ, has it happened yet? No. You're doctrinally in the Old Testament. Who is he speaking to? He is speaking to Jews. You say, well, how do you know that? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. What are Christians doing in Judea? They're not in there. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the Jews. All right. But still, see, little Steve Anderson won't tell you that. How about this one? Here's another good one. What, you know, verse 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. What is the holy place for a Christian? It's your body, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're not dealing with the body of Christ here. We're not dealing with the church age. Okay, we are dealing with the Old Testament. He's talking to Jews. All right? And it goes on here, and, and he reads about the, you know, he goes down here starting at uh, verse 31, about how he'll go out and he'll, you know, the great sound of a trumpet gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And he'll say, well, that the elect is the is the body of Christ. Oh, really? Well, we'll talk more about that in just a minute here. But uh, let me see um, where it says it here. Look at this one up here in the previous verse, in verse 30. All the tribes of the earth mourn. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. What are the tribes? Well, if you go back to Revelation, Revelation chapter... 7. You seem to see the tribe word show up there. Okay? What are we dealing with here? You're dealing with the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes. You say, I don't believe it. Okay, well, let's go to James chapter 1. 
James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Matthew chapter 24 is written to the Jews. You say, prove it. I, I'm still not convinced. Okay, let me show you. Look at verse 20. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. The body of Christ doesn't have to keep the Sabbath day. Who's he writing to? He's writing to the Jews. Steve Anderson cannot handle the passage. Let's go back and listen to a little bit more of this nonsense. Really after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Okay, there he's done reading the passage. You can read it yourself. But let's hear what he has to say. Now, we see in this passage certain elements that make it very clear that this is about the rapture. Because, of course, those who are believing in a pre-trib rapture don't want to admit that this is about the rapture. Yeah, so, it isn't. they try to say, oh, this is a different event altogether. Well, look it at is. the elements that are in this passage. We've got Jesus Christ coming in the clouds. We've got a trumpet sounding. And we've got Jesus Christ gathering together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, and let's look at some other things that happen that Steve Anderson just happened to leave out because he's a liar. Let me just show you a couple things. Let's look at verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now look at here. Sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heavens, of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Oh, wait a second there, too. The sign. I thought the Jews require a sign. Like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Well, apparently Steve Anderson can't handle that either. But you see, the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Um, where's the sun and the moon being darkened, you know, and the stars falling from heaven? Where's it at? Where's it say in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye? It's not the same event. You say, what about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Um, where's the sun being darkened, the moon being darkened, the stars falling from heaven? Where's it at? It's not there. Why? Because it's two different events, and he is lying you. It says in Mark 13 just a slightly different wording when it says from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And so this is clearly the rapture. No, the Bible it? says that Jesus comes in the clouds, he gathers the elect, the trumpet sounds. This is exactly what we saw in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. No, it isn't. You see, you follow this guy, he's going to lie to you, he's going to destroy one of the crowns of reward that you'll get, and I'll talk about that later. Don't follow Steve Anderson. He is a lying false prophet.